So let's take a look about how long multiplication is performed in binary uh, for binary numbers, because this will guide our implementation of long multipliers uh, in hardware. So long multiplication in binary is done the same way it is done in decimal by the calculation of partial products and then the addition of the sum ends that result from the this operation to produce a final product. So this is best illustrated using an example, and it is actually kind of important to understand uh, how this uh, works out before we start looking at hardware implementations, because uh, understanding how the arithmetic goes helps guide the hardware. So for the first bit of the multiplier, so this operand is called the multiplier, this operand is called the multiplicand. And what we're going to do here is for the first bit, we're going to multiply this uh, bit by every single bit in the multiplicand. So the zero is going to multiply everything to produce four zeros. And then the one is going to multiply the multiplicand again to produce zero, one, one, one. This one is going to multiply them again to produce zero, one, one, one. And the final zero is going to produce four zeros. Now, each of these bits is called a partial product. And each of these rows is called a sum end. And when we add these together, we will produce uh, the result of multiplication, which is called the product. So the product can be calculated just by doing long addition. So this zero is going to produce a zero. Zero plus zero is zero. Zero plus one plus zero is going to produce a one. Zero plus one plus one plus zero is going to produce a zero and a carry out of one, which produces a one and a carry out of one, which produces a zero and a carry out of one to produce a one. There's also a, an output carry from this bit position, which in this case is zero. Now we have a product which is stored in eight bits, and this is generally what's going to happen when you have uh, operands of equal size. So if you have uh, two operands that are n bits each, the product is going to be two n bits long. If you have product uh, operands that are weak, unequal length, so um, the product is going to be the summation, the length of the product is going to be the summation of the word length of each of the operands, uh, which is why when we, use, when we do fixed point analysis, it's really important to focus on multipliers because they have a very bad dynamic range. Now, when we look at this multiplication operation, we find that it is, uh, in terms of implementation, it's going to be divided into two things, calculation of the partial products, and then the combination of the final products of the partial products into the final uh, product. So which is more important? So in, in decimal, the calculation of partial products as well as the uh, summation of the sum ends are probably of equal importance. But in binary, it is the summation of the sum ends that is the majority of the complexity of the multiplier. Calculating the partial products is extremely simple because each partial product is going to be produced using a single AND gate. In fact, it's even simpler than that. If you look at the rows of sum ends here, you will find that the sum ends are one of two things, either zeros, which are trivial, or copies of the multiplicand. And whether they are zeros or copies of the multiplicand, it depends on the current bit of the multiplier. If the current bit of the multiplier is zero, then the sum end is entirely null. If it's uh, one, then the sum end is a copy of the multiplicand. And so multiplication is really just about adding shifted versions of the, mul of the, of the multiplicand, uh, each of which is called a sum end. So multiplication or doing fast multiplication is actually more um, contingent on being able to do fast addition than you might think at first. And so even though the critical path of most digital signal processing circuits lies in multipliers, um, optimizing the solution is more about focusing on adders rather than multipliers. Now, it's important to understand what we mean by a multiplier, because when we start to implement hardware uh, multipliers, we'll find that they are kind of big in terms of area, that their delay is uh, much larger than that of adders, and that thus their power is actually uh, very high. They have a large capacitance because of the large area, and they, they're also slow, so they have a really bad power, power delay product. 
So if we can avoid the use of a multiplier, that would be a good thing. And when we say that we have a multiplier uh, where z is equal to x times y, this is contingent on everything here being a variable. So x and y are both variables that could be anything uh, every cycle. And in that, in that case, we need a, an actual full multiplier. But if one of the operands, the multiplier or the multiplicand is a constant, we don't actually consider this a full multiplier. So if z is, for example, equal to some constant multiplied by y, this is not a uh, multiplier. We'll never implement this as a full multiplier. So let's consider some uh, of the more trivial or more easy cases. For example, z is equal to uh, 4y, z is equal to uh, 16y, and so on. So if, 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 if z is equal to 4y, that's not actually a multiplier. That's just a shift, a shift by two bit positions. If z is equal to 16y, then that's a shift by four bit positions. If z is equal to 32y, then that's a shift of y by five bit positions. It's a complete waste of resources to use a full multiplier to produce these uh, products. But it's even, uh, this is even valid for um, products that are not power of 2. So if z is equal to 5x, that's 4x plus x. So that's just a multiplier. Uh, th that's just a shifter by two bits plus an adder that adds a, an unshifted version of x to z. And if z is equal to uh, 31y, for example, that's 32y minus y, which is again a shift and then add. But if we actually look at the full multiplier, that's what a multiplier is. A multiplier is just a bunch of shifts and adds. Except that in the case of the full multiplier, every single shift has to be considered because we don't know what the multiplier operand is in the current cycle and what it will be in the next cycle. So, for example, let's consider the case where um, our multiplier operand Let's just think of this as uh, C and this as Y. So let's consider the case, for example, where uh, Z is equal to 9Y, which means that C uh, is equal to 9. So in this case, the multiplier operand C is equal to 1, 0, 0, 1. This would mean that uh, the last sum end and the first sum end are non-trivial, while the two in the middle are trivial, which means that if we are going to implement this as a constant multiplier, we can only um, we can always assume that the two middle sum ends are trivial and do not need to be added. But if we have a general multiplier, we don't know what C is from cycle to cycle, and so we need to be able to add even the trivial sum ends, um, and so we need to add all the sum ends because we don't know which are trivial and which are non-trivial.